What if death could be conquered? What if pain and suffering could be cast into oblivion and the very summit of divinity reached? How far would you go to have it in your grasp? Would you kill, deceive, experiment on, and betray your own humanity for a taste of immortal life, risking the complete loss of self in the process? These hypothetical questions are very real to the alchemists in Lies of P. This is the story of the Krat experiment treachery conducted in secret to realize their grand ambition. It's not an experiment with beakers or flasks, rather with bodies and souls, the purpose of which is to attain immortality, to ascend to godhood. Krat, the gilded city of the future. Its people know not want or fear, as they live leisured lives surrounded by the great technological breakthrough of puppetry. They also know not what lies haunt the core of their society, and what atrocity will unfold. Krat's downfall is a consequence of ambition, the ambition of the alchemists. To understand the motivations behind the Krat experiment requires first a glimpse at its perpetrators. Alchemy is a proto-science and philosophy concerned primarily with the refinement and purification of natural materials in an attempt to create perfection. Through progressive improvement, humanity can reunite with the heavenly divinity from which it was born. Its mysteries and lore have attracted brilliant minds, hopeful souls, and restless ambition. Alchemy is a deep investigation into the spiritual constitution of life, matter, all things by close scrutiny of the natural cycle connecting birth to death. The sense of the eternal and immortal is symbolized in the Ouroboros, the snake of eternity, kept as the symbol of the order which we see on various landmarks and in the Ouroboros' eye weapon. Central to alchemical pursuits is the magnum opus, the great work the culmination of all experimentation in which the secrets of achieving perfect body and soul are realized. Once purified, humanity would transcend time and disease to live eternal in a bliss free from woe. This high ideal manifested most commonly in the Philosopher's Stone, an object purported to transmute base minerals into silver and gold, to cure any malady, and to bless with a mortal life. Alchemy and its adherents weren't busied only by external refinement, but by purification of the soul. It is a philosophy concerned with good, with unlocking human potential and cultivating the human essence, cultivating virtue. Perfection in all aspects is synonymous with divinity. Alchemists are secretive cabal, jealous of their knowledge. They work in darkness, guard their discoveries and confront all obstacles to the magnum opus. Alchemists have infiltrated areas of influence across the globe and orchestrate through deception their philosophical machinations. Its word of a mysterious, ethereal substance prevalent in the dismal port town of Krat named Ergo that first draws alchemical attention to the region and forever alters its fate. Ergo is the essence of life. It is the part of the soul that houses memories, passions, character, identity. It's what makes a person truly unique, and it's what is released upon their death. Ergo is typically intangible, a misty substance that diffuses into the atmosphere almost as quickly as it coalesces. But a strange mineral endemic to the earth beneath Krat, named Kraut, hungers for Ergo and traps it within a crystalline structure. Though Crowd has been known for centuries around the town, the potential and power manifested in Ergo are not realized until the enlightened eyes of the alchemists gaze upon it. This mystical, almost otherworldly substance represents possibility and breakthrough in the magnum opus, if it could be harnessed. To this end, a contingent of alchemists under the stewardship of Valentinus Monad descend upon Krat and establish for themselves an island compound from which they can observe and conduct trials in secret. 
Monod is wise, but not nearly possessed of such zeal as his apprentice, Simon Manus. Manus was born with a unique ability to read the minds of others. He was branded a freak, a failure, a disappointment to his father, in whom Simon placed all of his childhood faith. His tumultuous youth led to jaded disillusionment with the world and a desire to reshape it in his own vision. This we hear in the Confession of Simon Manus. The ability to read minds, being abandoned in front of God meant the world's destruction. From then on, my life existed to make a world without lies, a world where no one betrays you and there is only truth, even if it's forced. Valentinus and Simon are visited by Paracelsus, an obscure figure, a man venerated among alchemists for his achievement in pursuit of the great work, who gives them the arm of God. This strange relic is purported to be the physical remains of the alchemist's true God, believed to have come down from the heavens and made mankind, only to have been torn apart by its creation. The arm, a grisly remnant of that event. Still, as a piece of the divine, it is charged with power and revered by the alchemists. With the arm of God in their possession, the alchemists of the isle initiate a great project. They don't wish merely to understand ergo, they seek to unlock its power. Thus the idea is born, the seed for the crot experiment planted that will take decades to bear fruit. The Krat experiment is the alchemist's intention to, through ergo, refine the human body and soul to fulfill the great work and transcend beyond mortality to embrace the divine. But as with any experiment, trial and error is required to verify the hypothesis and the fascination with ergo is just one of many projects of interest for the organization at large. Valentinus and the alchemists of the isle first take control of the city through subtle measures. Their science, their capital, and their clout slowly transform Krat from a destitute village into one of the most prestigious and advanced cities in the world, and in turn make the alchemists indispensable. Largely through the genius of Giuseppe Geppetto and invention of puppet animatronics with ergo crystals as their power source, the alchemists bestow their largesse upon Krat as the city accrues great wealth. Technology booms, puppets grow ubiquitous, and the alchemists insidiously exert control as they develop infrastructure, marry into aristocracy, appoint themselves to government offices, and plaster their presence across all levels of Krat society. The dependence of the city on alchemical finance and leadership earns the alchemists unfettered authority over Krat. With the city in their hands, they are free to shape it to their whims, to influence the masses. Put simply, Krat becomes a great laboratory and testing site for alchemical pursuits. This seizure of power coincides with a grim but significant discovery. A strange sickness emanates from the ergo caverns beneath the city and infects miners with what will be known as the petrification disease. Also called the stone sickness for its striking symptoms, this disease attacks the body. Muscles stiffen, skin scales over, the blood turns blue and organs fail as an individual is trapped inside hardened and unmoving flesh. Few know the origin of the disease as due to overexposure to ergo, its contaminating spores and its radiative aura. The miners who have spent years in such close proximity to the substance are the first to exhibit signs of disease. But more fascinating to the alchemists is what the stone sickness creates upon death. Those afflicted have their life's essence, their memories in time, their ergo frozen and condensed into another form of harvestable material rather than have their spirits diffuse into nothingness. This incredible breakthrough demonstrates another means of producing ergo, and the alchemists jump upon it immediately. They work through various avenues to spread misinformation, to lie and obscure their new experimentation into the petrification disease. Members of the order offer themselves as volunteers to undergo gruesome trials, while many more subjects 
are cajoled or kidnapped from among Krat's downtrodden, and forced to endure often fatal tests. As the alchemists seek to understand the petrification disease and to wield its ergo producing and refining properties. They wish to use the trauma of the disease as a catalyst for human improvement and distill several elixirs. Preliminary trials are inconclusive, but several subjects record hearing the thoughts of others, tasting and feeling the memories trapped within ergo. Most, however, die painful and violent deaths. An incident of dubious nature precipitates the first large outbreak of petrification disease and public hysteria in reaction that unfolds within the Rose Estate, home of the Monad Family Charity House and Boarding School. Nearly all within, including Valentinus Monad, the leader of the alchemists, and Carlo Geppetto, Giuseppe's son, are infected and killed by the outbreak. This is detailed by the Rose Estate incident papers the only documentation of the event to survive, as it was swept largely under the rug. The city of Krat decided to put an indefinite stop to the investigation on the disaster that took place in the Monad Charity House, known as the Rose Estate. This was to prevent chaos caused by the large-scale spreading of the petrification disease. There have been no confirmed survivors so far. This suspension likely comes at the behest of Simon Manus, a man who had everything to gain from the tragedy. It could be inferred that Simon released the disease within the Rose Estate to observe its progress and efficiency while at the same time removing Valentinus, the only obstacle to the supreme leadership among the alchemists that Manus craved. Regardless, what follows after this incident sees a dramatic shift in both Krat and the alchemists, as the visionary Simon assumes stewardship of the Krat experiment, and soon pushes emphatically for ever more dangerous and ambitious trials. In fevered dreams, Menace feels a connection between the petrification disease, ergo, and the magical arm of God, and works ardently to uncover the formula. The arm had been stolen from the isle by agents of Archbishop Andreas, but mere exposure to its aura mixed with the petrification disease transforms him into an abomination and consumes his mind. The relic then finds itself in the hands of Giuseppe Geppetto as he endeavors to bring back his son Carlo. The arm holds strange power over life and death, a key ingredient in resurrection. Before he can use it, however, his stores are ransacked by those under Manus' employ and the arm of God returned to Arch Abbey. It's a significant piece in the Krat experiment, but not the sole piece. Alchemist researchers further refine distillates of the stone's sickness to create an elixir that not only neutralizes the virus, but imbues the inoculated with superhuman ability. The first elixir iterations are unsuccessful, producing instead terrible mutations within test subjects, as the experiment report of the order sheds light. Three patients suffering from the petrification disease who got the elixir injection at the same time died. Right up until their deaths, they experienced painful necrosis and skin ruptures, seizures and convulsions, and crystalline metastasis throughout the body. Ultimately, they became mutations known as carcasses. The carcass monsters are grotesque abominations that hunger for ergo above all things and destroy in crazed frenzy. They represent the precarious path towards divinity and the dangers of failure for even the most devout alchemists. In time, however, their experiments bear fruit and an elixir is created that not only cures the stone sickness, but represents the next step in human evolution. Such individuals as the fighting champion Victor and the walker of illusions demonstrate a stable equilibrium between the stone sickness and the cure as do many of the lower-ranking alchemists that can be found throughout Krat and Arch Abbey. We see, though, their constant need for elixir infusions in the tanks they wear. These subjects are powerful, but still possess physical or psychological instabilities that require further refinement. Soon, as the report goes on to detail, the alchemists unlock the perfect distillate. 
The sample extracted from subject number 890 is estimated to help the elixir develop into the next step. Sister Adriana, who will receive the next baptism, is expected to be able to fulfill the order's wishes. Wake up, evolve, ascend. Sister Adriana is none other than Laxasia the Complete, Simon's right hand, an exemplar of the godliness and divinity offered by petrification disease and its elixir. The sad zealot's ergo, obtained upon her defeat, goes on to say, The alchemist Adriana was baptized by the elixir, and she became the first whole being. Everything about her was perfect, except the fact that her feelings for one person could not be erased. With Adriana, the alchemists have conquered disease, decay, even death itself. They have embodied the magnum opus of their science. But to truly transcend humanity and achieve not just immortality, but divinity, requires the arm of God. Only through this heavenly vessel can Manus' vision be realized, and the power to fuel its ritual requires an immense collection of ergo on a scale as yet unseen. Devious designs are set in motion for the Krat experiment's next phase. To gather ergo with great speed requires its mass production and liberation. Simon intends to instigate another outbreak of petrification disease, this time consuming all of Krat. In preparation, the alchemists erect a great wall that surrounds Krat under false pretense of protecting the city and its technology from outsiders. Its true purpose is to trap all within and prevent escape or communication outside the city. This we see written on the walls of an overrun, bloodied Krat Central Station and in conversation with the Condottieri Bell. The suburbs are sealed off. There's no escape. Communications cut off too. Someone planned this all out. No idea who. Above my pay grade. The alchemists next supersaturate Krat with Ergo. They pump Ergo crystals into all layers of society and public life. It becomes currency, it is battery for countless puppets, it adorns dress, and its accumulation is symbolic of power. The citizens are horribly naive to the fact that such Ergo exposure is rapidly increasing the formation of petrification disease and the risk of outbreak. When the day of collection draws near, Krat is ill-prepared for a reckoning that will shatter its foundations and rend its existence. At Simon's order, the alchemists unleash their carcass abominations to coincide with the petrification outbreak. Mindless monsters slaughter the weak and afflicted. Those lucky have already perished from the stone disease. The chaos that engulfs Krat liberates an enormous amount of stored ergo as bodies perish and souls are fettered to stone. Perched atop Arch Abbey on the Isle of Alchemists is a device that captures and funnels Krat's ergo in preparation for Simon Manus to use the arm of God to initiate a final experiment, the results of which could see the rise of a new deity. At the precipice of success, Manus falls to ultimate failure. He underestimated the cunning of Giuseppe Geppetto and the intrepid conviction of Geppetto's greatest creation. Giuseppe is not at odds with Manus over alchemical philosophy or reckless ambition. Geppetto is at odds with him over the ergo liberated by Krat's ruin. Remorse and guilt over his son's death drive the master puppeteer to experiment with macabre forces. He desires above all to return Carlo from beyond the grave, and endeavors to create the pea organ as well as the most advanced puppet to realize this desire. But for his own ritual to work, Giuseppe requires both the arm of God and Krat's ergo, resources after which Simon also pursues. A grand lie hides Geppetto's true motives, and he manipulates his puppet creation into thwarting the alchemists. In P's final confrontation with the alchemist's leader, we see the true face of the divine, as Simon's physical form cannot hope to contain the liberated ergo channeled into it. His new body, 
brilliant and resplendent, reaches towards the heavens to touch the very hand of God. This act suffuses Manus with divinity. He has truly left humanity behind. But the magnum opus to which he has dedicated himself remains beyond reach. Manus may have distilled, refined, and perfected the human soul through creation of his elixir, but he didn't safeguard his own against the vices of human nature that steer from virtue. His internal existence was not unadulterated by greed and ambition, and so he was not able to receive alchemy's true blessing, thus allowing the puppet of Geppetto to overcome and destroy him. The alchemists are dispersed, their disillusioned leader vanquished. Krat lies in the parlous ruin of its once golden splendor, as those few survivors seek to rebuild from calamity. In most regards, the Krat experiment was a dismal failure, but from death and defilement, two key insights can be found. The first is that of the alchemical elixir. Though its procurement was far from humane, the final iteration of the elixir seems to have succeeded in neutralizing the stone's sickness, in ameliorating most diseases generally, and conferring onto individuals vitality and abilities beyond human measure. This, in the eyes of alchemists the world over, is a valiant achievement. Its ends justify the means. The elixir is one more step to realizing the great work that lies tantalizingly beyond reach. The second is an unforeseen consequence not initially sought, but nonetheless steeped with profound significance. Hints are laid throughout the story of reawakened puppets, machines that have been touched by the ergo residing in their fuel cells and have awakened an inner ego. Sometimes ergo-driven puppets gain what we call awakened egos, individuality more or less. First realization comes to the alchemists in a made puppet that housed the ergo of renowned engineer Camille. Their notes report, Despite being in the early phase when the design was rudimentary, Camille caught and saved a baby who fell from a crib. Such function was nowhere to be found in the design. Ergo was not a simple power stone. It embraces life. Through ergo, we can open the door to eternal life. The demented murderer Arlecchino, Polandina, and many more puppets emerge bearing sentiment and ego. This ego confers memory, personality, what many might consider the soul of one who has perished onto an automaton, unweathered by time's inexorable march. In Geppetto's puppet, we see not just the awakening of ego, but perhaps the birth of a novel species, a new kind of consciousness where immortal metal is married to a mortal soul. Depending on the choices made throughout the game, if P confronts and embraces what truly makes one human, he leaves behind the aspect of puppet and becomes something more. Already an exceedingly lifelike creation, unrestricted by the Grand Covenant, this puppet undergoes physical changes and emotional maturity as the awakened ego of Carlo, residing in his mechanical heart, transforms him into what can only be described as a human. This is a breakthrough that touches at the existential center of humanity. If a puppet, a machine, can nonetheless possess the emotion and essence of a person, does that not make them human? We see this not only in Geppetto's puppet, but that of Sophia's that is awakened by the ergo of her dead self. Of course, this goes beyond philosophical debate. The transference of soul from flesh to metal allows individuals to endure beyond death. It is representative of the eternal and immortal life prized by alchemists as the magnum opus. It is this, above all things, that piques the interest of Paracelsus and his organization, who scour the world over for the secrets of life perfected, life eternal, life reunited with divinity. I think we have a new brother, a new type of humanity, so to speak. There are many it's perhaps this outcome that strikes at the true purpose of the Krod experiment and why Paracelsus conferred onto the alchemists the arm of God. 
Paracelsus under the guise of the ailing pharmacist Giangio, observes Geppetto's puppet, documents its decisions, and realizes the human spirit has been reborn in a metal carapace. He relates such information to his mysterious colleagues in a scene that raises more questions than it answers. Thanks so much for watching and listening to this video on the Alchemists of the Isle and the Crot Experiment. Let me know your thoughts on Manus, Paracelsus, and the Magnum Opus, as well as your own insights and suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you're a fan of lore and storytelling, be sure to subscribe to the channel, check out the podcast where content is uploaded frequently. I want to thank my amazing supporters over on Patreon, who make all of this possible, and I couldn't do it without their fantastic support. If you'd like to become a lore luminary for access to me, a great community, written scripts, and early video drops, head to patreon.com slash thelorebrarians to learn more. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore.